Hey everybody, Professor Klein back here in the Ohio University Human Anatomy Lab. And today I'm talking about the ear, but specifically the sound transmission pathway. Pathway. Pathway, pathway. How do you hear sound? If you heard that word pathway, you heard it loudly, medium, and more quietly. And I'm going to tell you today, how do you get from sound waves outside your body to your brain? Let's begin. All right, we are here on the ear model and we want to walk through where sound would travel. Now, first, I got the magic probe coming in here to show you what the sound waves would do. They would come through what's called the oracle. Oracle or pina is this funnel shape of the ear. I'm going to show you the full model. We don't leave anything out with these videos. That is the full model of the ear. A lot of elastic cartilage in your ear because you can bend your ear. So this is elastic tissue right here. Check your own ear out and see. Whoops, see if it can bend like this. All right, back to the model, Professor Klein, back to it. As you travel in, you're gonna travel through the external auditory canal right here. So see this canal? There's a bunch of adipose tissue, adipose tissue, a muscle here. This would be one of the facial muscles or muscles of mastication alongside the ear. Then you got bone. All this stuff is bone. So this is the temporal bone. And the temporal bone goes all the way around here. So your ear is within your temporal bone. Where is that actually? Well, in the skull here, you can see the temporal bone as the bone on the side right here. And there's actually this hole called the external acoustic meatus in the skull that leads into the structures we were just looking at. But that would be right in this area. So if you've got a skull or you're learning this in anatomy lab, take a look right in this area and deep. If I were to break off a part of this temporal bone, I would be able to see these structures. So that's where I'm at. Cover this up and it's the top of that temporal bone. So once you get through here, sound waves are still coming in and then they hit this. And it is like hitting a drum. Boom. What happens when you hit a drum? Well, that drum starts to vibrate. I'm talking vibrations going on in the drum. And that's what's going on in this eardrum. Now, eardrum, the technical anatomical name is tympanic membrane. So make sure you use the word tympanic membrane now once we're done with that we're going into what we call the middle ear now the middle ear consists of three ear bones we call these ossicles let me move this around for you here and as you can see there's one that's attached to the tympanic membrane that is going to be called the malleus or malleus here but notice how there's a red line dividing the malleus from the incus. See that incus bone right there? The incus bone, and let me see if I can line this up properly here. The incus bone will connect with the stapes. There we go. Incus bone, there's a crate look at it incus bone will connect with the stapes bone which is this other one over here stapes or stapes that then connects to the inner ear but we've got some real ossicles right here so look real close we've got the malleus the incus and the stapes these are the real sizes stapes is the smallest bone in the body Check them out. All right, back to it. We saw those bones. There's a few muscles in here as well. 
a few muscles coming up to you. This one's the tensor tympani. This one actually will stretch over. It looks like it's going this way, but it's going over to the tympanic membrane. And there's another one not really shown called the stapedius, uh, which attaches to the stapes. Stapedius, which I'll show a picture of right now, is the smallest bone, smallest muscle in the body. Stapes is the smallest bone. And together, they make up some really small structures. But muscles dampen the vibrations because now these bones are shaken. And they're shaken and they push into this part here. It's the vestibular system and the cochlea. So if we're talking about sound transmission, we're not even worried about this area. This is for balance over here, vestibular. We want the vibrations and they do go over to the cochlea. So let me pull this out for a second and show you the cochlea. We can see a few different parts too. It's about two and a half turns of three different chambers, snail's tail, and I often refer to it as a cinnamon bun because you can unwind a cinnamon bun, right? We're gonna actually unwind the cochlea using the whiteboard to finish this demo. All right, here we are, and we're looking at it. And I'll stay behind the camera because I just want to show what was drawn on the board here. So I took some time to draw out the vestibule, the semicircular canals, and the cochlea itself. So I'll write cochlea on here. As this whole thing in here is the cochlea. So we're talking this entire structure. Here's the cochlea. Now, if we were really looking at it, what else have we got? We got two different components to the cochlea and everything in the inner ear. We got the membranous labyrinth and the bony labyrinth. Now, anything in blue is the membranous labyrinth. And the membranous labyrinth is going to have endolymph inside of it. That is a different type of fluid than what's on the outside. So see all this blue stuff here. This is the membranous labyrinth as it wraps up and around and around two and a half times. The bony labyrinth, which is more like bone, but not truly bone, is all the black. And what you can see here is it's on the outside of the blue part. So the bony labyrinth covers the blue. Now this picture doesn't do it fully justice. So I'm going to bring in another model to show you guys what exactly the bony labyrinth is. And what it is here is if you can see this, got another video on this model, check that video out. But you can see the gray and the white, right? And see how the gray is deeper and it's kind of been uncovered by the white, but over here it's all white. Now the white parts would be the bony labyrinth and the gray parts would be the membranous labyrinth. So see how the white parts completely cover, 3D model here for you, completely cover the membranous labyrinth. So that's what's going on up here in the black and the blue. But with a 2D picture, you can't see that. A 3D model, you can. All right, bony, membranous, good. Now we're gonna talk about some different sections. Check out the other video I've got on balance and how balance works, but we're gonna focus in on the cochlea. So we got those vibrations will be coming in and we've got three different chambers here. But I'm gonna go ahead and unwind this after I label it so you can see more, but let me label it first. And when I label it, you'll notice that there's always a layer that's on the top. That layer, the layer that's always on the top, is going to be called the scale vestibuli. Running out of room here with all this stuff labeled scale vestibuli. The middle chamber 
that's going to be called the cochlear duct and i really could take it from anywhere i'm going to go cochlear duct right here also called scaly media but this bottom part i'll squeeze it in here it's also got a scaly name scaly tympani scaly tympani so we got scaly vestibuli that top part we got cochlear duct the blue and then scaly tympani the bottom part but if i were to unwind this just like this if i were to take a clay model of the cochlea, and you can see all three ducts right here. And if I were to unwind this, unwind this, I'll unwind it on the, the skin model here, you can see these three chambers. Let me jump over to here though, because I've drawn it out. And you can see scaly vestibuli, scaly tympani, and this has paralymph if it's Part of the bony labyrinth so that's what the scaly vestibuli is and the scaly tympani has the paralymph but the cochlear duct has the mnolymph so i've written that out on the board for you as in the lymph and paralymph let me really write this in so you can see this one well in the lymph paralymph and with these where do we pick up? Well, we were at the stapes, right? I'll put the stapes right here. The stapes, if we re remind ourselves, are is shaken. Shaken, and it's gonna push against what's called the oval window. It's a window, it's a area, membranous area in here against the scaly vestibuli. And that's really going to start some waves in the paralymph. And these waves right here, eventually eventually going to cross here at some point you're going to cross here and again it's a piano but this one starts with high pitch and it goes all the way to low pitch is how it senses it in the cochlea after we unwound it right so whatever pitch it is, let's say it's right in the middle pitch, it crosses here. Now in here, we've got the organ of corti that has the hair cells that detect the actual sound and the vibration. So I'm gonna come over to a different model right here to show you what I'm actually looking at. So if we're looking in here, this is the scaly vestibuli. This is the cochlear duct with the organ of corti in it right see that stuff in there and then this bottom one is the scaly tympani so up here right in this area would be the scaly vestibuli if we took a cross section right a cross section of this this would be the cochlear duct and then the scaly tympani down here so what we're looking at with the organ of corti is the tectoral membrane on top, hair cells, basilar membrane down here. Now there's more to it, but let's just keep it to that anatomy. And we've got the cochlear nerve coming off of it. See that cochlear nerve coming off of it? There is some bone in here, right? This is actual bone. The blue would be the bony labyrinth. The pink would be the membranous labyrinth and then some other bone over here. So we just went from here where it crosses this. And I showed you on this model how it crosses over and it would literally push, push down. See how this bends a little bit? It would push down on this, which pushes down on this, which bends the hair cells. Right, imagine this marker was a hair cell, it would bend it. Now when it bends, it activates this nerve and the nerve is traveling to the brain. But how does it do that? Let's go back to here and let's look at the nerve. Well, it's the cochlear branch coming off the cochlea, but as you can see here, the vestibular branch 
is merged into it. So this is the vestibulocochlear nerve at this point when they're merged. This nerve, follow with me here, this nerve is going to travel up. Here's the nerve traveling with the marker and go to this bottom dot called the inferior colliculus. The inferior colliculus is part of the quadruminal plate, which is part of the midbrain, which is part of the brainstem, which is part of the brain full structures here. So that's a lot to say that this one dot relays auditory information. Where does it relay it? Well, it relays it, let's get all these other models out of the way, to the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe of the brain deals with hearing, sound. That was a ton of detail and information on how sound travels from the outside environment, speaking, music, car noises, whatever the noise might be, all the way to your brain that you process it. So rewatch that if you want to see me explain it again, but let me do it one more time in fast motion. So I'm just gonna read through the list of sound transmission. All right, first we have the oracle of the penis, and that's where the sound waves travel through. A little bit of adipose tissue here, that yellow stuff, one muscle, bunch of bone, temporal bone, right? That's where everything sits in the ear. Now what's going on here is that sound waves are coming in through the external acoustic meatus, also called the external auditory canal. As it travels in, it hits this tympanic membrane and that tympanic membrane is like a drum and it starts vibrating the middle ear bones. Middle ear bones go malleus, incus, stapes, in that order, M, I, S. And we can see those actual bones right there. But back to the model, we can see the stapes is pressed against the inner ear via the oval window. So if you were to somehow detach that stapes, the oval window would be in this area. Then it's going over to the cochlea, but this is not the greatest model to see the full cochlea. So let's go over to here where we pick up the cochlea and reminder, you've got the membranous labyrinth and the bony labyrinth making up the three different components of the cochlea. We got the scaly vestibuli, that top black part. We got the cochlear duct, that part of the middle. We got the scaly vest tympani, that bottom black part as well. Let's unwind it. And when you unwind it, you come over here and you can see those three different components as well. Stapes pressed up against the oval window, just like a window you might be looking outside at. And the scaly vestibuli, which has paralymph, starts to make the vibration waves. Now, depending on the pitch, high pitch in the beginning, low pitch in the, the farthest part there, it crosses that and there's in the lymph in the cochlear duct because it's part of the membranous labyrinth and it pushes against the organ of cortite. What do those look like? Over here, we saw this and we saw the three different chambers, scaly vestibuli, scaly media or the cochlear duct with the organ of cortite and the scaly tympani right here. Now it will cross that and it will push down. What is that? That's this up here, this riser's membrane pushing down on this, on this, and bending at the hair cells. The hair cells will bend, doink, and it will activate this nerve. This nerve is the cochlear nerve right here, or you could say cochlear branch of this. If I were to look on this model, extra thing in here, you can see that cochlear branch of the cochlea. Where is that going though? Back to this model, we're almost done. Hang with me here merges with the vestibular nerve and becomes the vestibular cochlear nerve and that goes over to the brain but not fully the brain yet the brain stem it goes to the inferior colliculus of the quadrumal plate of the midbrain of the brain stem of the brain lots of the phrases right there and it finishes with the temporal lobe All right, that was a ton on sound transmission, but we're not done yet. Hang with me for another 45 seconds because I have to explain sound or vibration dissipation. So after you go through the cochlear duct, you're gonna have the vibration still in the inner ear. Now they're gonna go out this time 
out the scaly timpani, which has the pair length, through something called the round window. So let me write the round window on the board here for you. This right here is the round window. I love it. It's literally round and the oval window is literally oval. But we're going out of here, back to that tympanic cavity. So it'd be like this right in here. But then there is something and I'll maybe angle that a little bit better here. There's something called the Eustachian tube. This is the Eustachian tube right here. It's going to go to your nose. Worst spelling of the nose there. Let me redo that for you there. It's going to your nose. What does that look like on the model? It looks like this. Once you get out of the cochlea and you're going back out to this area. So this area in here is that tympanic cavity I've been talking about with the middle ear bones. This is the station tube. Station tube right here. Got a couple different names for it, but that's mainly the station tube. And then it dissipates it into the nose. All right, I don't know about you, but I need a break. That was a lot of information. Take a break, absorb this, and come back and try to draw this out, or at least write it out, list it out, rewatch the video, but stop it before I say the answer and try to tell the answer, try to teach it back to yourself or bring a friend in. Anatomy is all about making a, an anatomy team that will elevate you as a student. So don't do this alone, bring in some classmates, teach it to them, have them teach it back to you so that you know you're learning the correct thing. Like and follow, uh, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below if this helped you, if you wanna see something else, if there was something I missed on the model, drop it in the comments and I will make a video or respond to your comment with an answer. I'm Professor Klein from Ohio University's Human Anatomy Lab. Thanks for watching.